I'm uh, Frank Reisbroman. I'm the Director General of the Global Green Growth Institute, GRGI, and I'm very happy to speak to you here today in this beautiful park. Uh, this is a great part of Seoul. It's a park where we often come, uh, and I'm happy to speak to you here today about the importance of green growth and the green transition for Korea and for the world. These days, we are happy that climate change, green growth, a green recovery from the pandemic, green jobs, have become such an important topic. That's exactly what GDGI was set up to do. We were initiated by the Korean government, established in 2012 as an intergovernmental organization to help countries accelerate this green transition. That's exactly what the world needs. We support countries in coming up with these more ambitious climate goals. And then we take that forward to identify investment projects and mobilize green and climate finance to implement those projects. That is what our member countries, 41 right now, appreciate most. The world is on a very unsustainable path. Right now, we really should be worried about the future of humanity, about the world that we leave to our children and grandchildren. We are breaking planetary boundaries, as scientists call it, where we could have very unexpected changes in climate, in biodiversity, we see here in Korea the air pollution, we know about climate change. We don't see that every plastic bottle we use ends up in the ocean creating massive plastic patches and that plastic breaks down, becomes microplastic, gets into fish and this evening if you eat fish, you're eating your plastic bottles right on your plate. That is the real worry we have for our planet, sustainability of our planet. So we need to come up with a new model of growth that is environmentally sustainable and socially inclusive, that takes everybody along, provides green jobs for people that currently are unemployed or poor. That is what we call green growth. And we work with our members to accelerate the transition to that model of green growth because the world urgently needs it. GRGI is working on many green growth projects, on policies from more ambitious NDCs to green building codes to better feed-in tariffs to enable renewable energy investments and then indeed renewable energy projects from big putting renewable energy on the sides of a big highway between Mumbai and Nagpur last year 250 megawatt 150 million dollar all the way down to putting solar panels on the roofs of small off-grid hotels on the far outer islands of Vanuatu to provide electricity and uh, solar freezer to small hotels to have a more sustainable operation. So I have to say, two years ago, I would have said Korea wasn't really in the front. It was more a climate laggard. But over the last two years, during the pandemic, we've seen a rapid increase in Korean awareness and commitment to tackle the climate crisis. It started with the president's announcement of a green and digital new deal to deal with the pandemic in the summer of last year, then followed by President Moon's announcement of a net zero by 2050 commitment in October, which was then followed up by a net zero law enacted by the National Assembly in August this year, and a number of other commitments, stopping international investment in coal-fired power plants, quite important. Prime Minister's office released a new development strategy committing to increase the green component to the OECD average by 2030. And quite important for GGI, President Moon promised in his speech to the United Nations General Assembly in September that the Korean government will put a Korea Green New Deal Trust Fund at GGI and put $5 million a year into that fund for GGI to help Green New Deal policies and projects share to share that with other GGI member countries to have them experience the benefits of such a green recovery through a Green New Deal approach. So now that Korea has taken strong action inside the country, many countries are looking to Korea for leadership. And particularly in Asia, where Korea is one of the most advanced countries now, we have some key battlegrounds like powering past coal. Coal use is 
very high in Asia and has not yet gone down. So as Korea has made some of these commitments, we look forward to, for Korea to work with its close partners like Vietnam, like Indonesia, where there is a strong engagement to direct investment of Korean companies to work together to power past coal. That's probably the number one priority. And yes, Korea used to be a big investor in coal-fired power plants. The government has committed to stop, so there is space to do something else. So we are looking forward to work with the Korean government, with Koika, with the Korean Exim Bank, with the different ministries, to find those green investment projects where there is a mutual interest, where Korean companies can share their technology, where digital technology from Korea can make a real contribution, and to work together to accelerate the green transition, particularly in Asia and beyond. Some people believe that a green recovery cannot be combined with climate action. But we've actually looked at the NDCs for the Paris Agreement, and of course those emphasize how emissions can be reduced. But we estimated how many green jobs can be produced if you implement those commitments. And for 29 GGI member countries that had concrete renewable energy targets, we conclude that their implementation would lead to 10 million extra job years from renewable energy work. And for the just 14 countries with strong forest-related targets, that would generate 35 million job years in implementation. That's the number one argument why we believe green recovery and climate action can go together. And that is how, in the coming years, we'll work with our member governments to have a green recovery from the pandemic, to implement the kind of green new deals like Korea has committed to and to accelerate climate action, all to have a green transition to a more sustainable and more inclusive society.